بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله العليم الخبير المتقن نظام العالم بلا معين ونصير فسبحان الله الذي حكمته بالغة وعلمه غزير ونعمه واصلة إلى كل صغير وكبير ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له في نقير ولا قطمير ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله الذي هدانا بكتاب منير ودعانا إلى الله بالإنذار والتبشير صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ما دامت الكواكب تسير أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وكلا نقص عليك من أنباء الرسل ما نثبت به فؤادك وجاءك في هذه الحق وموعظة وذكرى للمؤمنين صدق الله العظيم Friends and elders, one of the greatest challenges today the modern world is facing in every regard is to sustain any span in doing anything due to the overwhelming nature of distractions. So we talk of ADHD, attention deficit disorder, and many youngsters today are diagnosed with the condition. Uh, but leave the average youngster, who doesn't have attention deficit disorder? Uh, I have people asking me this question umpteen times. How do you engage an audience for so long when people can't focus? Well, I hope you focused. <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe I should end it shortly. I don't have a problem. So I keep on saying every 20 minutes, well, I don't mean literally because then you're going to watch your time. I've got to throw in some good humor that almost equates a break, you know, and then allows uh, for a mental stretch and then re-engage. Because there's just no focus. That's, that's, that's the reality. Allah Ta'ala praised every action of our Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Quran. And Allah Ta'ala praised the discipline of his gaze. Allah Ta'ala praised the discipline of his gaze. Just look at our condition. If you're not in Salah, whatever is happening around you doesn't concern you. As soon as you start Salah, the person next to you taking out his socks, the one taking out his phone, the one closing the window, the one on in the fan, everything becomes exciting. Everything has now relevance to it. As soon as you're out of Salah, all this is irrelevant. As soon as you're in Salah, all these things suddenly have some meaning to distract you because there's lack of focus. The Prophet wasallam goes up in Mi'raj, is in the heavens, the skies are illuminated. They are enveloped in the description of the Quran. When the low tree in the heavens was enveloped by that which enveloped him. This is a description of tafkhim. Tafkhim means in greatness and richness. You do not spell it out but you express it in a subtle way or implicitly to denote its magnanimity. It's a type of balagha. I don't want to digress into it. I want to keep on to the focus. So there is anwarat, tajalliyat, reflection, beauty, splendor, greatness, everything. And you are overwhelmed by so much happening to you at that time. And the Prophet Sallallahu gaze with precision is fixed exactly on what Allah wants him to see at which time precisely. مَا زَاغَ الْبَصَرُ وَمَا طَغَى مَا زَاغَ الْبَصَرُ وَمَا طَغَى اَيْ مَا مَالَ بَصَرُهُ عَنْ مَرْئِيِّهِ الْمَقْسُودِ وَلَا جَاوَزَهُ تِلْكَ اللَّيْلَةِ Nabi alayhi salam's gaze, you know I'm not a driving instructor, but if somebody is new on the road and they ask me for advice, not that they do, but I say it in my talks, say listen I'm starting to drive, give me some advice. I'll say uh, you you, you new on the road? Yes. Okay, my advice to you is when driving, look on the road. <laughs> no, you're kidding me. No, I kid you not. I kid you not. 
We are living in a world you need to repeat basics. You need to tell a person when you at a graveyard, think of death. We are living in a world people are so distracted by Allah. You have to tell a person in a graveyard, year while you are, by the way, actually think of mort. And I often say at my talks at funerals that Allah told the kuffar of Makkah you travel to Sham for business which was the economic hub. You don't have to detour or you don't have to consciously go out. When you travel in then on your very road of travel you happen to pass by the ruins of the previous nations. When passing there, not taking a detour, just pause and reflect and take a cue and remind yourself. Many of us on our daily commuting, we pass by cemeteries. وَإِنَّكُمْ لَتَمُرُّونَ عَلَيْهِمْ مُصْبِحِينَ وَبِاللَّيْلِ أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ وَإِنَّكُمْ لَتَمُرُّونَ عَلَيْهِمْ مُصْبِحِينَ Wallahi, for me, you know, I, I say this to Allah, whatever I look at, I see Qur'an. Whatever I see, I just see a connection, a connotation, a relation, and a context. I gave you the backdrop to it. وَلَقَدْ أَتَوْا عَلَى الْقَرْيَةِ الَّتِي أُمْطِرَتْ مَطَرَ السَّوْءِ أَفَلَمْ يَكُونُوا يَرَوْنَهَا You pass by those ruins. Okay, you didn't pause. You didn't reflect. But وَإِنَّهَا لَبِسَبِيلٍ مُقِيمٍ It's dead on the road on which you're traveling. Can you lose and can your senses be so dead and dormant that you face it head on and you don't reflect? So Allah told the Prophet وسلم, and Allah praised him and that also the ulama make an amazing context by the oath of the star when it sets. So a star and the galaxy and the constellation they operate in the greater happenings of the cosmic world and in how Allah has decreed it. And it doesn't move outside its orbit. It moves with precision in the manner and the rhythm and the pattern that Allah has created it. When a star doesn't go out of its line, how can my Nabi go out of his line? Ma dalla wa ma ghawa. Tafsir al-Uthmani, dalla and ghawa, one is unintentionally you go offline and one is inadvertently. One is, you, you know, sometimes it's taxi drivers when you're on a meter, then intentionally they're taking a long path. Right? That's not by mistake. Obviously, you don't know. For, oh, 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 so something there, but you can see this thing is here. Meanwhile, you were just like down the road. So it could be deliberate or it could be inadvertent. My Nabi did not stray deliberately nor inadvertently. Whatever was shown to the Prophet ﷺ, with precision, his gaze was fixed on that. Not looking beyond it or not looking besides it. La ilaha illallah. Can you imagine, I mean, today, let, let, let's be honest, when a person, leave religion, when a person is driving, where's the mind? So anyway, I'm saying, the level of distractions, Qadi Shuraih, he was a great judge, uh, he was a tabi'i, but he was appointed as a judge even in the period of Sahaba. Even Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu's muqaddama in that used to come to him. So you can imagine the caliber of the judge. He had a son, 10 years old. He had son, sent his son to the madrasa. 
On the way, the children were playing and they had some dogs and they were doing some show. So the boy got distracted. Tabi'in Dor, that era, that period, the son of Qadi Shuray, and he's got distracted. Can you imagine today? So the next day, Qadi Shuray asked him, you went to Madrasa? He said, no. What happened? No, I was going when my friends were playing outside and then I just got busy with them. So he wrote a letter to his ustad. Taraka salata li aklubin yas'a laha yabghil hirasha ma'al huwati rujjas fala ya'ti yannaka ghudwatan bi sahifatin kutibat lahu ka sahifatil mutalammis fa idha ataka fadawihi bi malamatin aw'idhu maw'idatal adib al-kayyis wa'alam bi annahu ma ata fanafsuhu ma'a ma yujarri'uni a'azzu al-anfus Arabic poetry was in their blood, so they could just say it. We don't even understand it. Fatima radiallana is crying that Nabi Sassam passed away. And in expressing her pain, her words take the form of poetry. Can you imagine that? Ya abata ajaba rabban da'a Ya abata ila jibri lanan'a Ya abata jannatul firdawsi ma'wa if I tell you to compose a poem in your own native language, you need a Sunday morning, birds chirping, blue skies, which is rare, uh, uh, no dogs barking, no one horny, no trains moving, no hustle, no bustle, and then also only you'll understand the rhythm of those couplets. Ya abata ajaba rabban da'a, ya abata illa jibri lanan'a, ya abata jannatul firdawsi ma'wa. Ya Abata, ajaba rabban da'a. Oh Abba, have you accepted, obliged to the call of Allah? Ya Abata, ila jibreel nan'a. Na'a in Arabic means to convey the news of death. Oh my dad, do we convey the news of your death to Jibreel alayhi salam? Who do we say? Of course Jibreel knows it, but expressing the, 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 the moment. Ya abata jannatul firdawsi ma'wa Oh my Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Only jannatul firdaws can be your abode Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu You know it's a long poem but the one poem that uh, One stanza in that poem he said uh, In which he expressed his uh, Pain and sorrow over the demise of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Kam li bibu'dika min hammin yunasibuni Kam li bibu'dika min hammin yunasibuni Iza tadhakkartu anni la araka abada Oh my Habib Sassim, I don't know and my brain shuts off and I cannot even begin to imagine the gravity of the emptiness I will feel knowing that for as long as I inhabit the earth I will never have the privilege to see you again on earth. So anyway, he wrote, كُتِبَتْ لَهُ كَصَحِيفَةِ الْمُتَلَمِّسِ فَإِذَا أَتَاكَ فَدَاوِهِ بِمَلَامَةٍ أَوْ عِذْهُ مَوْعِظَةَ الْأَدِيبِ الْكَيِّسِ He wrote a note to the teacher. Back in the times, the parent and the teacher were on one page to bring about common discipline in the child. By extension, it was the entire community. Every senior was viewed as an uncle who had the authority to discipline. This was the common so there was a greater network that would rally and mobilize in the interest of that one child. But of course today that's not the case. Neither does the every child consider any senior to be a senior to have the rights to tell me. And nor does the father consent for that. He takes offense to this year. And then that leaves that responsibility exclusive to us. So the children could become more daring, more blaring, more blatant, more brazen. Because you know what? You can do what you want to. It's fine. I mean, who's he to tell me in any way? So anyway, he writes him a note and he says, listen, my son's going to come. And this is what I discovered. Uh, give him some warning. Give him some motivation. My point, I'm saying, if distraction could divert the son of Qadi Shuray in that time 
away from learning. <laughs> what, what do you want to talk of, of today's time and the level of distraction? One of the most difficult injunctions in the deen is that of istiqamat. There's two things that are extremely difficult. One is ikhlas and one is istiqamat. Sincerity. Again, social media hasn't helped the cause of sincerity. If anything, it's compromised it more. And the other thing is istiqamat. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked that your blessed hair have become white, then he said, Shayyabatni al-Hud. Surah Hud has made it white. And the ulama say it wasn't the entire surah. It was one verse in the surah, Fastaqim kama umirt. Right? Then in Bayan al-Quran also is written something amazing. وَمِنَ الْبَلَاغَةِ الْقُرْآنِيَّةِ أَنَّ الْأَوَامِرِ بِأَفْعَالِ الْخَيْرِ أُفْرِدَتْ لِلنَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ وَإِنْ كَانَتْ عَمَّةً فِي الْمَعْنَى وَأَنَّ الْمَنَاهِ جُمِعَتْ لِلْأُمَّةِ if you, وَمَا أَعْظَمُ شَأْنِ حَبِيبِهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ If you look at the words of the Quran, you will appreciate it. Whenever it is a command, imperative, injunction, then Allah uses a singular expression as though he's talking to his Habib وسلم, alone. And whenever it comes to a prohibition, Allah adopts a plural expression to imply it applies to everyone, but more to you, my Nabi is protected. And it's amazing when you see the verses preceding a singular, interjected with plural, and then followed with singular. And then you appreciate that pattern absolutely. وَاتَّبِعْ مَا أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْمُشْرِكِينَ وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ Then after that Allah says وَلَا تَسُبُّ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُوا وَلَا تَسُبُّ وَلَا تَسُبُّ Same thing here. وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا إِلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا فَتَمَسَّكُمُ النَّارِ وَمَا لَكُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مِنْ أَوْلِيَاءَ ثُمَّ لَا تُنْصَرُونَ وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةِ وَاصْبِرْ وَاصْبِرْ وَمِنَ الْبَلَاغَةِ الْقُرْآنِيَّةِ أن الأوامر بأفعال الخير أفردت للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. It is part of the balagat of the Quran and the eloquence and the richness of dialogue that when Allah addresses his, the, the injunction of doing, Allah uses an exclusive address. And when Allah speaks of prohibition, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses a plural context. Allah uses a plural context. In Tafsir Uthmani, there is something men amazing mentioned, and that's the focus I want to talk on, the need of developing concentration spans. In everything else, you need to, got to work on yourself to be focused. And, uh, you, you know, the, 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 the question today people ask, I've got a technology addiction, how can I leave it? So I say, leave it. We want to achieve this without any exercise. That's the definition of foolishness. To do the same thing and expect a different result. So when Qarun came out, and then he displayed his pomp and glory, and then people seen it and they were mesmerized, and then those that had iman and they were anchored in their faith, they said, وَيْلَكُمْ وَوْبِي to you, ثَوَابُ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ The reward of Allah is great. لِمَنْ آمَنَ وَعَمِلَ الصَّالِحَ For those who bring iman and do good deeds. وَلَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا الصَّابِرُونَ But that conviction and that realization is only conferred upon those who are steadfast and persevere. Under that, Hakim al-Ummah writes, دَلَّ عَلَى مَطْلُوبِيَّةِ الْمُجَاهَدَةِ دَلَّ عَلَى مَطْلُوبِيَّةِ الْمُجَاهَدَةِ That listen, when you see any glitter and glamour, not to be succumb or not to buckle or not to be mesmerized or not to be blown away, and to hold your grounds firmly, well, this is the world, this is going to happen, there's always going to be beauty, there's always going to be things that are going to cross you, but not to wink an eye, not to be taken away, not to lose your focus for a little while, and to remain, that condition of being anchored, of being firm, of being fixed, and not being you know, swayed with the wind, happens to those that endure. So endurance and perseverance, dalla ala matlubiyyatil mujahada. You need to exert yourself to, to, to constantly remind yourself with anger. This is temporary. This is transitory. I need to remind that exercise. Now, obviously, it's been countered. I read an article of a woman who was speaking about eating healthy food, organic, GMO-free, natural, right? 
And she says, if you were to make an impression on a newborn, eat good food, eat healthy food, eat natural things, and you start making an impression on the subconscious mind of the child, when the child is of three years of age and he starts seeing billboards of fast food, that those billboards have already destroyed the impression that you had impressed on that mind for three years by a slash of 50%. This is a scientific report. So you, you, you're talking to a baby, of course you're not relating cognitively, but there are subtle impressions you're making. So I'm saying, the level of mujahada that you need to make needs to be far greater against the onslaught. Someone told in Tafsir Uthmani, it is written there, someone asked Allama Shabir Ahmed Uthmani, ke tawba se guna dul jayenge? Tawba se guna dul jayenge? So from my shart ye hai, ke jitna mail, itna sabun. Wow. Tawbah se guna dhul jayenge with my sins. Will Allah forgive my sins with Tawbah? He said, shart ye hai ke jitna meel itna sabun. Provided your detergent, your soap is in relation to the residue, to the oil, to the dirt on your hands. I mean, you soiled completely and you're using a drop of soap. And then you want it to wash out. It doesn't balance out. Allah's mercy is infinite and limitless and it's amazing and unique. But, but let, there be, let there be some correlation to the two. Let it understand in the relation. <coughs> so, istiqamat. In Tafsir Uthmani, it is written uh, on the sur- this ayah in Surah an Kabut. That when Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, when the nation obviously decided to catapult him and hurl him into the fire. And of course they did what they did. Right? فَمَا كَانَ جَوَابَ قَوْمِهِ إِلَّا أَنْ قَالُوا قُتُلُوهُ أَوْ حَرِّقُوهُ فَأَنْجَاهُ اللَّهُ مِنَ النَّارِ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمِ يُؤْمِنُونَ they said, no, you know what, just drop him, hurl him, catapult him into the fire. And so they did it. This mentioned in Tafsir Uthman, you can see it. They put him into the fire, and of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected him. Now, that is why the ulama say, and this is mentioned in the mawais of Hakimul Ummah, that Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam slaughtered his son. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam slaughtered his son. Why? Because the definition of slaughter is Imrar al-Sikkin ala al Imrar was sikkin ala al to pass the knife on the neck. Now, if the knife doesn't cut, then you can't say he didn't slaughter. That's a separate thing. So the fire didn't burn Ibrahim alayhi salam. So he said, no, you can't call him guilty because he didn't burn. No, no, you did whatever was within your reach to harm him. There was divine intervention that rescued him. But in essence, you burnt him. In essence, you burnt him. Divine intervention rescued him. But you cannot say, no, no, you know what? He's acquitted and he's innocent because you know what? There wasn't even a, a, a strand of hair that was burnt. No, no, that's a separate thing altogether. Imraru sikkin al hulqum. That was separate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had then fadaynahu bidibhin azim replaced it by a ram. So they catapult Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam into the fire. And then when he comes out, and this is what's mentioned in Tafsir Uthmani, he comes out of the fire as he's walking out, he tells the same people, but you know what I told you before, I'm going to say to you again, what you're doing is wrong, and this act of yours is, this is istiqamat. وَقَالَ إِنَّمَا اتَّخَذْتُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ He writes there, yani آگ سے نکلنے کے فوراً بعد پھر اپنی بات شروع کر دی ان کے ساتھ. وَقَالَ إِنَّمَا اتَّخَذْتُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَوْثَانَ مَوَدَّةَ بَيْنِكُمْ There's like five different aqwal on this ayat here. I don't want to go into the academics of this year that your friendship here you are having over your idol worship is temporary, this bond, this connection, this relation here. But then on the day of Qiyamah, this very, end, this very bond will result in enmity. يَلْعَنُ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا يَلْعَنُ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا So the question is, how do we create a sense of spiritual concentration? I think we need to work on it in every regard. And like I told you, dalla ala matlubiyyatil mujahada. Because if I don't, I, I, I could put a, an exercise. I'm not going to on my phone or switch my phone on at fajr time. That's it, right. 
So every day I'm going to work on it at a particular time. Maybe you'll start getting up earlier for Fajr also. Who knows? And at a particular time, and daily you stretch it and you create that discipline. This is the time I would probably on my, switch my phone on. And I'm going to work on it. I'll switch it off at that time and that's it. And create that gap and that duration where I am in a techno-free time and period where I'm going to function normal without any, any, any digital device. So the verse I recited before you, وَكُلَّنَّ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الرُّسُلِ And O Muhammad ﷺ, we narrate to you from the tales and the stories of those that preceded you of the prophets, ma that نُثَبِّتْ We give reinforcement, be he through it, for adak to your heart. We narrate to you the tales, the stories, the anecdotes, the incidents of those that preceded you, by virtue of which we give you strength and courage. And that is why the Qur'an was revealed gradually. Ibn Kathir has written great academic, I'll give you the reference, you can read it, scholars can open it up. So one of the uh, objections that disbelievers had, and they said it's, it supported the claim of fabrication, was the gradual revelation. Gradual revelation for them, you see, why, why can't you give us the whole Qur'an? It's because you, you're doing it slowly, you're busy thinking it up, you're planning it up, you then, you know, putting the words together, you're putting the format together. This is a proof. The fact that it's coming slowly, that is the proof that you're fabricating. وَالْعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَوْ لَا نُزِّلَ عَلَيْهِ الْقُرْآنُ جُمْلَةً وَاحِدَةً But why not one time? Just send the whole Quran and finish. So Ibn Kathir has given great write-up on the wisdom of the gradual revelation in the knowledge of Allah. It's a whole particular write-up there. Kadali, it came down gradually. لِنُثَبِّتَ بِهِ فُؤَادَكْ وَرَتَّلْنَاهُ تَرْتِيلًا So gradual, of course Allah's knowledge is, is, is uh, ever and, and, and you know, qadeem and, and, and azali and abadi. But the gradual revelation allowed to give strength and comfort and renewed solace to the Messenger وسلم, at every interval, at every interval. قَدْ نَرَى تَقَلُّبَ وَجْهِكَ فِي السَّمَاءِ فَلَنُوَلِّيَنَّكَ قِبْلَةً تَرْضَاهَا وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةً إِلَّا عَلَى الَّذِينَ هَدَى اللَّهِ You must see in Tafsir Uthmani under the word Kabira, what's written is amazing, subhanallah. Obviously, when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi was told to face Masjid Al-Aqsa, he did so, he obliged 16 months. And he was forewarned that uh, people are going to object. You'll get some fools, some naive people, some people with less intellect, they're going to object on this. The verse is revealed in advance to tell the Prophet of Allah the veracity of the Quran, despite the fact that the Quran revealed and the verses were revealed, they still come and make those objections. It had to because, of course, it was said. سَيَقُولُ السُّفَهَاءُ مِنَ النَّاسِ مَا وَلَّاهُمْ عَنْ قِبْلَتِهِمُ الَّتِي So obviously the Prophet ﷺ in Makkah, Mukarrama, Kaaba, Sayyidina Ibrahim a.s., the heart is yearning to the Kaaba and to face Aqsa in that sense was a challenge. But the Prophet of Allah obliged. وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةً And it is challenging. Tafsir Uthmani writes, Allah Mashabir Uthmani, that that is imtihan. Imtihan is what is difficult. That is imtihan. That is the nature. That is the nature. So the gradual revelation of the Quran brought so much uh, strength and comfort to the Messenger sallallahu at, at each interval in his life. At each interval in his life. Uh, they came and they told the Prophet sallallahu alter the Quran. Change this. Temper. And that's today exactly what's happening in the world. Can you, can you, can you relook? Can you redefine? Can you renegotiate? Can you stretch it? Can you, uh, uh, you know what, uh, alter it? Can you tweak it? No, I can't. I cannot tweak it. I cannot alter it. That's the duration of idda. That's the period. That's what Allah has said. That's what Allah has legislated. You get sisters phone in. Um, I mean, idda. But you know what? I got an appointment for my license. I mean, the books of fiqh are not going to say for license you can go. 
you need to stay in. That's the duration. Put yourself in pause mode. Put yourself in reflection. This is the command of Allah subhanahu Why must I sit in Idda but he's such a bad guy? It's got nothing to do with your ex-husband. Why must I give her maintenance for so many months? She's the bad person. It's got nothing to do with her. That's Allah's command on you that after talaq you need to do this. And that's Allah's command on you that you need to observe it. That has nothing to do with your ex-husband. Why? No, no, why me? But it's nothing to do with him. It's Allah's command on you. Idda is Allah's put it for you. Take it and understand it and comprehend it. Allah's deen is perfect, complete and wholesome. He understands your makeup, my makeup, your demeanor, my, your composition. And accordingly with his perfect knowledge, he is legislated it. In fact, the ulama say, لا نزاع في أن الشارع قاسد إلى التكليف بما يلزم فيه كلفة ومشقة ما. لكنه لا يقصد نفس المشقة بل يقصد ما في ذلك من المصالح العائدة على المكلف that the sharia never intends listen to this the ulama who speak on maqasid ulama shatubi has made mention of this in great detail I've been reading this works recently it's just amazing right so Islam by design never intends causing any pain or difficulty to any human. مَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيَجْعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ حَرَجٍ وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجٍ But Islam has impressed and imposed certain conditions on you. And look at the analogy given. The aim of that condition and that, con- that, that command is not to make difficulty for you. Although it comes with difficulty, but the aim through that command is the discipline out of that command. لا نزاع في أن الشارع قاصد إلى التكليف بما يلزم فيه كلفة ومشقة ما. لكنه لا يقصد نفس المشقة بل يقصد ما في ذلك من المصالح العائدة على المكلف. كما أن الطبيب لا يقصد بسقي الدواء المر المريض الإيلام وإن كان عالما بالإيلام When a doctor is prescribing unpleasant medication for a patient the aim is not to cause him discomfort though he is cognizant of the discomfort on his taste buds when eating that but the motive behind that is the cure and not the discomfort The Sharia by design has legislated conditions and in those ahkam of Allah there is difficulty. The aim is not to put you through the difficulty. The aim is to give you the discipline that comes about with that command. Khair, so I was saying that uh, Allah told the Prophet ﷺ that we have revealed and we have sent to you the stories of the prophets. Hakim al Umar writes in Bayan al Quran under this ayah, Dalla ala anna li qisas al maqbulina ta'thiratun fil qulub, tathbitan wa taqwiyatan wa tanshita. Dalla ala anna li qisas al maqbulina ta'thiratun fil qulub. Allah tells the Prophet, we're giving you strength. Through the stories of the prophets that preceded you, which is a clear sign, the most effective way to take spiritual energy is to read the stories of the pious. وَمِن ثَمَّ اِهْتَمَّ الْقَوْمُ سَرْدَ حِكَايَاتِ الْأَوْلِيَاءِ And this ayah and its likes is the basis for pious to gather the biographies of noble people so that it can propel and inspire others because the ayah is saying, we narrate to you the tales of those that came before to give you strength. Hence I'm saying, for spiritual span to be extended, we need to read the lives of the Sahaba passionately, actively, the seerah of our Habib Sallallahu but, but But not a casual read, uh, an active read. And to read. So constantly if you reading and daily you seeing and you reading, this is going to give you constant energy. There is this amazing narration 
that uh, Dirar bin Damura al-Kinani radiyallahu anhu comes to visit Muawiyah radiyallahu anhu and this is how unique uh, the, the muhabba of the Sahaba were. Uh, I, I've said this year and I say it without fear of contradiction that the Sahaba were more united amidst their diverse opinions than we can be united when we have consensus of opinion. The Sahaba were more united, their hearts. Their hearts were more united amidst their diverse opinion than we can possibly have unity when we have consensus of opinion. Our hearts are not so united when we have consensus, leave alone when we have diverse opinions, then it speaks for itself, you know, how it plays out. But their hearts were united. Their hearts were united. And that was, of course, the sohbet of our Habib, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when the hearts are united, then strangers are brothers. And when the hearts are disunited, then brothers are strangers. وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي صُدُورِهِمْ مِنْ غِلْ إِخْوَانِ 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 وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي صُدُورِهِمْ That's my shahid. وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي صُدُورِهِمْ مِنْ غِلْ إِخْوَانِ Allah says, before they will enter Jannah, we will remove from their hearts all form of rancor, discord, bickering, anything. The result of that will be إِخْوَانِ They will become brothers. Ala surur on thrones, mutaqabilin, looking at each other and enjoying merrily in the gardens of Jannah. May Allah make us from amongst them. Never was the definition of this ummah of unity defined as consensus of opinion because Allah has created us with different temperaments and it is healthy growth to have diversity within the parameters of our sharia. This is meaningful. <coughs> So, Dirar bin Damura al-Kinani comes to Sayyidina Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. Sayyidina Muawiyah radiallahu anhu is telling Dirar, tell me about Ali, man. Tell me about Ali. He's passed on. But talk about him. Talk about Ali. Tell me about this great man. Radiallahu anhu. There were differences. And those differences were dealt with. But the cleanliness and the purity of the hearts. And if, if only that level of tolerance can be incorporated in our structures within the scholar fraternity, within the marriage circles, within siblings, is to appreciate the diversity, but to keep a clean heart. To keep a clean heart. So, Dirar radiallahu anhu said, Awa tu'afini ya amir al mu'minin." No man, I, 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 can, I, I cannot do this, please excuse me. He said, no, la u'afika, I insist you. Sifli aliyya, I'm asking you. So we're taking the cue to get that motivation to increase our spiritual span, I'm giving you the backdrop and the context. I told you what's the melody and I'm giving you the cure. I hope you're following a pattern. The way forward is to read, to speak thoroughly, to absorb and take a cue from it. So what does Dhirar radiallahu anhu describe Muawiyah radiallahu anhu, uh, describe Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu? Kana wallahi ba'id al-mada, shadeed al quwa يقول فصلا يحكم عدلا يتفجر العلم من جوانبه وتنتق الحكمة من نواحيه يستوحش من الدنيا وزهرتها يستأنس بالليل وظلمته كان والله بعيد المدى سيدنا علي was a man with high objectives in English they say a poor person is not one without wealth but one without a dream dream high think high have goals, have initiatives. That's it. That was Sayyidina Ali. He was a man with high objectives. High objectives. I heard this from people who, of course, have been in the effort of Tablighi for many years. They say when Mawlana Ilyas Rahmatullah had started the effort, so then at the masjid there in the Marcus, the door was small. So he said, no, no, no. Break this door. We need to have a bit raised door. So they said, why? He said, no, 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 there are a lot of great, tall people that are going to be coming to this Marcus as well. He says, no, but these people are all small in their stature. No, no, from Africa and from different parts of the world, Allah is going to send people that are lanky and tall and, and towering. So we need, to, we need to think further and we need to physically elevate this here because they're going to come. Kana wallahi ba'id al mada. Think, think far. Think, think deep. Have great aspirations. 
I know of a person whom Allah is blessed with, and he's mentioned this to me. Uh, and, 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 and what he shared to me actually, you know, motivates me to share this. He said, there were times in my life where people did me favor, and I was only hoping that I stopped taking their favors. That's how desperate I was. But I made dua to Allah, Allah, bring a moment that I can repay this favor. But in terms of possibility, it was so remote because the more I was praying for that, the more dependent I was getting on them. But he said, Allah brought some after 20 years, some after 30 years, some after 40 years, where Allah reversed the cycle and situations arose where they were in need of me. This is keeping a hope with your Lord and having a vision and a dream. And that was Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu. Have high objectives. Have great goals. The famous incident that's mentioned, we were in, in Africa, in, in East Africa, in the deserts, Mombasa, we were doing an inauguration there. I won't forget the entire village came out and I had to give a talk there and we're inaugurating 100 homes with the Alim Dad Foundation. And uh, one person mentioned this incident. Subsequently, I you know, researched it and spoke about it in many of my talks where uh, the king passes by an elderly man and he's planted an olive tree. Now, if you're into green fingers and growth and farming, you will know an olive tree takes a long time to grow, unlike many of the other, you know, uh, seeds, etc. So the king asked this person, and uh, Shaykhun Kabir was sin. You are old in your advanced age and you're planting a seed now. You think you live to see this produce? You live to pluck and harvest this fruit? So this man said, غَرَسَ مَنْ قَبْلَنَا فَأَكَلْنَا وَنَحْنُ نَغْرِسْ لِكَيْ يَأْكُلْ مَنْ بَعْدَنَا غَرَسَ مَنْ قَبْلَنَا فَأَكَلْنَا Those before us didn't think like that. They planted the seeds with the hope that we love to see it. And we planting for the next generation. This is when society was growing great. When you plant a seed, knowing very well you won't live to see the shade of this tree. But somebody will probably have his lunch under this tree one day. And that's enough an accomplishment for me that I've invested in nature and the environment for someone else. Kana wallahi ba'id al-mada, shadeed al quwa We knew the strength of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu. His spiritual strength was known. His physical strength was known. On the occasion of Khaybar, everybody knows the strength. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr had the banner. And then there was no breakthrough. Sayyidina, the Sahabi had it. And there was no breakthrough. And then the Prophet ﷺ said this most amazing statement. غَدًا أُعْتِ الرَّايَ رَجُلًا يُحِبُّ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَيُحِبُّهُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ Which of course is the most amazing thing. And we've heard it. That tomorrow I give the banner to a person who loves Allah and his Nabi. Probably in that we all want to say we are in that part of the statement. But then the Prophet ﷺ said, the man I give the banner to tomorrow, it's not only he loves Allah and his Nabi, Allah and his Nabi loves him also. Right? In Arabic, when you praise someone, you use the word ni'mah or you use the word habbada. And you have bi'sa and sa'a for them. This is not a nahwa lesson, but it's basic. Af'al madh and them. يَا حَبَّذَا الْجَنَّةِ وَاقْتِرَابُهَا طَيِّبَةً وَبَارِدًا شَرَابُهَا وَالرُّومُ رُومٌ قَدَّنَا عَذَابُهَا So Allah praises the Anbiya in the Quran. Suleiman is a good man. Ni'ma al-Abd. Ayyub is a good man. Ni'ma al-Abd. Good man. Dawood. Ni'ma al-Abd. Good man. That word Ni'ma al-Abd. Great person. Awesome. Amazing. That statement to be conferred on us from Allah. That's the ultimate of all, all accomplishments. Ni'ma al-abd. Ni'ma al-abd. Ni'ma al-abd. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said regarding uh, sahabi, Khurayim uh, Asadi. Ni'ma al-rajulu Khurayim al-Asadi. Law la tulu jummatihi wa isbalu izari. Oh Khurayim. Khurayim. Bosa Romanus. Oh Khurayim is such a good man. His hair is just too long and his trouser is just below his ankle. Authentic hadith. Oh, Khurayim is such a good man. He's such a good... 
Again, I don't go into this here. This is the psychology. The Prophet ﷺ started with the compliment and then addressed the issue. You say so and so, yeah, not to balbo lamba. All right, biju bi ek be haru was to be oh hai. No, 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 no. No, no. The, the narration of Muatta, the narration of Muatta, the narration of Muatta. One Sahabi joined the Salah and then in the passion to secure the Rak'at, he started from the door. The narration of Muatta. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam heard the shuffle and the noise, etc. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after Salah asked what happened. So when he came, he said it was Ruku, so he started from there. Generally, it's us when we lack discipline or how to address and we actually make a good moment in which good tarbiyah can happen due to the lack of the tarbiyah. Unfortunately, we make it counterproductive. So we demoralize the spirit of that person. We started from the door. Next time, start from your house, by Just watch the traffic on the road. <laughs> That's what. It can only be a Nabi. It can only be a Nabi Sallallahu Zadakallahu hirsan. Zadakallahu hirsan. Wala ta'ud. Read the narration of Muatta. Zadaka. Salute to your passion. Salam bejta hu apke jazbe par. Salam bejta hu apke jazbe par. May Allah increase you in your passion and your desire and your enthusiasm. Don't repeat the action. Bolwani be a creature. Zadakallahu Hirsan. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started on a positive note. When the entire saga had happened and the accusation against our mother, um, on, uh, against in Aisha radiallahu anha, right? Which was extremely painful and no words can describe it. And then. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send down the exoneration of Aisha radiallahu anha after one month. And this is what I mentioned the other day and I'll say it again. I'm making dua for a certain thing in your life. You're making dua. Person come and say, you know what? I think I've got this jinn or waswasa or demons or shayateen. So I said, well, read the manzil. No, I'm reading the manzil. You know what? But it's still the same thing. Listen, my brother. The manzil is the cure. The manzil and the ayat, falak and nas. These are the ayat that were revealed to undo the spell that was cast on the Prophet ﷺ. You cannot get a more authentic formula of cure against jinn and sihar and demons and magic, etc., than the pure prescription that was given to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, when will you be cured? That's in Allah's knowledge. But we can't change the formula. The formula is absolutely authentic. I'm making dua for Shifa. I'm making dua for this. The time when it will happen, that is in Allah's knowledge. Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam. Yusuf alayhi salam is dropped in the well. Next door. Yaqub alayhi salam doesn't know where he is. Fast forward 40 years or 80 years. What does he say? If you don't think I'm senile. And I'm old. And I'm blurting. I'm getting the scent of my son Yusuf. Lawla an tufannidun. Ay lawla an tusaffihun. If you don't say this here, So what are we going to ask? Conservatively, historically, the narration suggests the distance was between 8 days to 15 days. Here the son is next door in the well, he can't get the smell. So is it as he aged, his smelling sense got strong? Are you following what I'm asking? وَمَا ذَاكَ إِلَّا لِأَنَّ الْأُمُورَ مَرْهُونَةٌ بِأَوْقَاتِهَا The reason for that is, in the knowledge of Allah, there was a duration for this test. 
and this test has now ended. So now he could smell from across the miles. And when he was sleeping right next door in close proximity, but at that time Allah had decreed the test, so Allah had barred the father from smelling his son. So the falak and nas is the cure. Sadqa is the cure. Say, but there's no well now that's Allah's will. The Prophet وسلم, with Aisha radiallahu anha, one month try and understand. The scandal is getting momentum every day. The attack and the onslaught is on the purest of the purest of the purest of women. وَقَدْ لَبِثَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ شَهْرًا لَا يُوحَى إِلَيْهِ بِشَيْءٍ One month by the will of Allah, Allah did not send down any exoneration or clarification. One month Allah had decreed in His wisdom for the duration of this test. Can you imagine the izzat of Aisha radiallahu anha and the the stress on our Habib Sassam for one month. And evil elements are thriving and exploiting and giving propaganda and momentum to this. The will of Allah, which is in his knowledge, revelation is paused for one month. That was the duration of the test Allah had decreed. Again, I was coming back to the point and we just digress from it. Speaking on the positive side. When Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sat down with Aisha radiallahu anha, at that time, Revali, what did Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? In kunti bari'a, fasayubarri'iki Allah. Wa in kunti al-mamti bithambil. Aisha, people are saying this here, if you're innocent, Allah will prove your innocence. And if some mistake has occurred, Tawbah is the option. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't accuse in anything. No revelation at this point. The point I'm saying is, Nabi Sassam acknowledged and he said, Zadakallahu hirsan. Start on the positive note. Nabi Sassam started on exoneration. We start on attack. We start on guilt. We demoralize. We digress in and time is running out. Forgive me, but I'm just saying these are important areas of tapping in, in giving the right, uh, you know, communicating the right message. The ulama have written... That what is the role of a teacher? In uridu illa al-islaha mastata'atu. Wa ma tawfiqi illa billah. Alayhi tawakkaltu wa ilayhi unib. In uridu illa al-islah. My intent is to reform. And my strength comes from Allah. I rely on Allah and to Allah do I focus. Hakim al-Umma writes, Fihi jam'um bayna wadha'if al-murshidi. Min al-sa'yi fi al-islahi ma'al ikhlasi وَمِنَ التَّوَكُّلِ فَلَا يَتْرُكُ السَّعْيَ لِأَجْلِ التَّوَكُّلِ وَلَا يَتَّكِلًا عَلَى السَّعْيِ Oh man, I don't know what to say man. Humbolo, humbolo. فِيهِ جَمْعٌ بَيْنَ وَضَائِفِ الْمُرْشِدِ This ayah encapsulates the role of a parent, guardian, tutor or mentor. فِيهِ جَمْعٌ بَيْنَ وَضَعْ مِنَ السَّعْيِ فِي الْإِصْلَاحِ That my aim and my motive is to reform. مِنَ السَّعْيِ فِي الْإِصْلَاحِ وَمِنَ التَّوَكُّلِ إِنْ أُرِيدُ إِلَّا الْإِصْلَاحَ I want to change. عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ My aim is, I rely on Allah. So, مِنَ السَّعْيِ فِي الْإِصْلَاحِ وَمِنَ التَّوَكُّلِ فَلَا يَتْرُكُ السَّعْيَ لِأَجْلِ التَّوَكُّلِ because of reliance on Allah, don't abandon your strategy. فَلَا يَتْرُكُ السَّعْيَ لِأَجْلِ التَّوَكُّلِ And because of effort, don't rely on your effort, rely on Allah. وَلَا يَتَّكِلًا عَلَى السَّعْيِ Understand the whole balance of the whole thing here. I'm trying to reform as much as I can. My trust is on Allah. So because of trust on Allah, that doesn't mean you stop telling them. And because you are telling them, that doesn't mean you don't rely on Allah. La ilaha illallah. If that becomes the focus of a person, a parent, a teacher, it will shape his life so different. But anyway, we were talking on that 
positive point here, and that's so important that we incorporate. Just to move quickly through the incident of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu, and again I'm saying we say this here for motivation, because each thing is, see Allah refers to the Quran as what? A kitab. Dhalika al-kitab. And then Hashaf Jalalain it's written that Dhalika here is for ta'zim and tafkhim, because Dhalika is to denote distance, and hadha close, and Allah says Dhalik. Right? So Dhalika meaning great, amazing, awesome, argus, reverend, you know, great book. Then Allah refers to the same Quran as Fiha Kutubun Qayyimah. In this book, there are many books. Every surah is a book. Every ayah is a book. Likewise, when we read the stories of the pious, every reflection from them is a chapter on its own. You read in one kitab, but every part of that iqtibas is a chapter. So Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu, we were talking, Kana wallahi ba'id al mada. Dream big, think big. But of course, you need to be real. Because, you know, they say the only problem with building castles in the air is when you want to enter, it needs a foundation. You build castles in the air, but then you can't enter, it needs a foundation, you need to be real. You can't just be in, in thought all the time. You need to have great thinking and planning and vision, but then you need to be action in it. You need to action in it. Okay. كَانَ وَاللَّهِ بَعِيدَ الْمَدَى شَدِيدَ الْقُوَى يَقُولُ فَصْلَ His speech was decisive. His speech was decisive. It was to the point. And let me again share an etiquette here. In this world of emojis, in this world of abbreviation, often without the necessary punctuations, you don't express yourself adequately. You make it cumbersome and difficult for the person. Sometimes people are asking a query and then R-I-D-1 or Ridwan. Read one. To read two? <laughs> I'm just using one. No. يَقُولُ fasla. Let your speech be clear. Let your speech be decisive. Don't be too long. Don't be too short. The ulama have said, قُولُ قَوْلًا sadida. The Ahlul Lugha, the philologists, the grammarians have written, the word sadid encompasses every angle of refined and noble speech. You, the the, the Ahlul Lugha make ittifaq on this word here where Allah says, fear me. So you ask, how do we fear Allah? Allah says, learn to talk properly. Mufti Shafi Zab Rahmatullah has made that istidlal. Ya yulazina amunu taqullah. Generally, wherever in the Quran Allah gives you a command, then He gives you a plan. You tell someone, hey, the world is in a crisis, what can you do? Say, help the world. No, where must I start? Well, you can't help everyone, but everyone can help someone. Okay, that makes sense. I hear you. Okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah, kind of. So every day I got to help someone. There's a plan of action. Ya you ladina amanu taqullah. Oh, you who believe, fear me. Ya Allah, how must I fear you? I mean, where do I start? Waltandur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghad. Start seeing how much your investments are for akhirat. Start measuring your investments for akhirat. Okay, that's the benchmark. Ya you ladina amanu taqullah. Oh, you who believe, fear me. Allah, where do I start? Kulu qawlan sadida. Learn to talk properly. Learn to talk properly. So, Sadida, the ulama say, is a, a comprehensive jami' word. It encompasses everything. When Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu would speak, يَقُولُ fasla وَيَحْكُمُ adla وَيَحْكُمُ adla. His rulings were absolute just. Just. I've, I've, I've mentioned this incident and maybe I'll share it again. Uh, you know, the يَتَفَجَّرُ الْعِلْمُ مِنْ جَوَانِبِهِ وَتَنْتِقُ الْحَكْمَةُ مِنْ نَوَاحِيهِ He was very accurate, very just, very fair, very balanced. And Allah had given him amazing knowledge. Well, Allah had given him that knowledge. It's just beyond our comprehension. Uh, so there's this uh, incident mentioned that uh, two people were eating uh, bread, loaves of bread, eight loaves of bread. جَلَسَ رَجُلًا يَتَغَدِّيًا so they had, uh, one had five loaves and one had three loaves of bread. So eight loaves, they eating. So while they were eating, a third person came. So they said, ah, join along. You know, come. As we say in Urdu, if there's place in your heart, there's place on your tablecloth, there's place in your car. But if there's no place in your heart, there's no place anywhere. And there's a word of caution, may Allah save me from being a miser, may Allah save you. Living or being associated with the miser is one of the worst things you can ever have in life. I've seen so many marriages breaking up purely because one partner is tight-fisted. Yaqbiduna aidiyahum. That's the trait of the munafiqeen. Don't be a miser. Idha jitumi'atil afatu falbukhlu sharruha. 
سيدنا علي الشير سلام قوم إذا جتمعت الآفات فالبخل شرها وشر من البخل المواعيد والمطل ولا خير في وعد إذا كان كاذبا ولا خير في قول إذا لم يكن فعله If you were to enumerate evil traits, then the miser is the worst. It's a very bad trait. And it's a breakup of a lot of marriages. Umm Salma radiallahu anha's father was known as Zad al-Raqib. لأن الركبان كانت لا تتزود إذا قصدت منازله أو صارت في صحبته. The provisions of the traveler. Because if you're traveling with him or you're going to him, he would take offense if you bring your provisions. Because it was known that he'll provide for everyone. Wallahi, thumma wallahi, I've seen this not once. Over times in my life, generous people are happy people. Generous people have less dull moments than misers. Everybody goes through fluctuation of emotions, but misers are permanently miserable. And, and, and generous people are happy people. They make people happy and they are happy. This is one of the qualities Allah will give you if you're a generous person. You'll be a... وَمَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَهُوَ يُخْلِفُ Allah says, whatever you spend, he'll replace. Mufti Shafizah, rahmatullahi, under this ayah, Yukhlifu says, Allah did not promise a monetary return. Allah promised a return. Leave it to Allah. He might replace the greed with contentment. Yu'adhibu man yasha'u wa yarhamu man yasha'u. Chapter 29, Surah An-Kabut, Madarik al-Tanzil, Allama Nasifi, under Yu'adhibu man yasha'u, he writes, Yu'adhibu man yasha'u bil hirsi. وَيَرْحَمُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ بِالْقَنَاعَةِ يُعَذِّبُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ بِالْحِرْسِ Allah can punish whomsoever He wish. What's the meaning of punishment? He can inflict greed in your heart. Allah can have mercy on anyone whomsoever He wishes. He can endow you with contentment and peace. Be generous. Be generous. Be generous. Generous people are happy people. Generous person is close to Allah, is close to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is close to people. I was in Toronto, coming out of the masjid after a talk. One old chacha came to me. He said, you know, your talk was so good. Everything very nice. Old man said, it's the tail end of my life. وَإِنْ كَثُرَتْ عُيُوبُكَ فِي الْبَرَايَا وَسَرَّكَ أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهَا غِطَاءُ تَسَتَّرْ بِالسَّخَاءِ فَكُلُّ عَيْبٍ يُغَطِّيهِ كَمَا قِيلَ السَّخَاءُ Imam Shafi's words. وَإِنْ كَثُرَتْ عُيُوبُكَ فِي الْبَرَايَا You did a lot of wrong in your life. And now you just want to put a lid on everything and you want to have a good ending. You want to have a good ending. I, I was just reading now, I spoke at the funeral now, and may Allah grant Jannah to our sister, the, the Irish singer that passed away, right? O'Connor, the sister that passed away. And uh, mashallah, she died with Iman. <laughs> How do you explain your joy to someone? If somebody died with Iman, they've died with the passport of Jannah. Now from this world, you can send Isa al thawab and put all the stems in there. But if you don't die with the passport, your stems on, what do you put it? You've died with the passport of Iman. So, during her years of career, I was just reading a post. During her years of career, she heard of someone who had cancer. It's, it's on her write-up. Uh, she heard of someone who had cancer and she came to spend some time with that person, to cheer that person up, spending money on that person, bringing comfort to that person, to say this person has little time left and whatever it is. And she spent that time and, uh, you know, the family continues to remember her for that impression that she made, bringing joy and happiness and spending and being selfless on someone. Hakim bin Hizam radiallahu anhu, was a very generous man. I'll tell you what I'm trying to say. A Sahabi is a Sahabi. He's the noblest of people. I'm saying generosity. That's the point I'm saying. Who, who are we to judge? A life of singing, concerts, and then dying with Iman. Huh? 
Imam Ghazali said, وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ كَافِرًا And when you see a disbeliever, then you tell yourself, عَسَىٰ أَنْ يُسْلِمْ It's possible he accepts Islam. غَدًا فَيَنْسَلُّ بِإِسْلَامِهِ مِنْ ذُنُوبِهِ كَمَا تُنْسَلُّ الشَّعْرَةُ مِنَ الْعَجِينِ Then just like a speck is taken out from kneaded flour, you take it out, that's how he will emerge clean and pure from his kufr and die clean. وَأَمَّا أَنَا فَعَسَىٰ أَنْ يُضِلَّنِي اللَّهِ And it's highly possible Allah can cause me to slip and fall. فَيَكُونُ غَدًا هُوَ مِنَ الْمُقَرَّبِينَ وَأَكُونُ أَنَا مِنَ الْمُبَعْدِينَ And he will stand up close to Allah and I'll stand up rejected. I've mentioned this year, I was in the Caribbean on a lecture tour and a brother told me, please come. I need you to meet someone. So I said, okay. But then the event was busy. The next day, he again asked me. So I said, okay, who do you want me to meet? Because sometimes, you know, person insists and everything. Then he wants you, you must come taste my wife's green tea. <laughs> <laughs> So I asked him, I said, what's, what's the whole thing you want? He said, brother, I'm a revert to Islam. The man who brought me in Islam, unfortunately, he's left the deen. Wallahi, I'm here in the house of Allah. So I'm so desperate for you to come and speak to him. The person who brought me into the deen has left the deen. فَيَكُونُ غَدًا هُوَ مِنَ الْمُقَرَّبِينَ Hakim bin Hizam asked the Prophet ﷺ, O Nabi of Allah, I used to spend a lot and I used to do a lot before Islam. Will Allah reward me for that? And Nabi ﷺ said, Allah rewarded you for your generosity by giving you iman. I just read this action of this woman and this sister that she had brought some joy to a cancer patient. Who knows if that was the catalyst to attract the mercy of Allah in her life, that Allah favored her with iman. I always say there can be no greater blessing on any disbeliever for an act of kindness than Allah favoring him or her with iman. And there can be no punishment on any believer for any wrong than deprivation of iman. May Allah protect us. So anyway, we may decide, note, I think I'm going to mention this one thing and kind of wrap it up because time is against us here. Uh, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu and we spoke on the note of being generous kif people this Ashura we pass man wassa'a ala iyalihi yawma Ashura right Sufyan bin Uyayna said I've been practicing on the narration of kindness to my family for 50 years of spending on them lavishly for 50 years and I have only seen goodness and blessings and baraka out of it Right? Just a gift, a token, an expression, and Allah will multiply and multiply. So, okay, we were saying that Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu, I want to mention two things here. One was his knowledge. يَتَفَجَّرُ الْعِلْمُ مِنْ جَوَانِبِهِ and يَحْكُمُ عَدْلَ لَا يَطْمَعُ الْقَوِيُّ فِي بَاطِلِهِ وَلَا يَيْأَسُ الضَّعِيفُ مِنْ عَدْلِهِ This is something serious. Let me mention the first point, then the second, and wrap up, inshallah. So, knowledge, and then we spoke about generosity. So, two people were sitting, and they were eating bread. One had five loaves, one had three loaves. Put it together, eight loaves of bread. Done. Okay. Third person came, he said, come join along. Right. He said, he ate. And then, when it's time to leave, he said, ah, you guys have been great, and you've been amazing, you've included me here. Take a eight dirhams. You know, just as a gesture, just as a token, just as an acknowledgement. Here's eight dirhams. خُذَاهَا عِوَضًا عَمَّا أَكَلْتُ مِنْ تُعَامِكُمَا You can read it. I read it in so many books. Here's the eight dirhams. In lieu of the bread that you included me. So I said, okay, gave it and he went. Now, look at, look at greed. They initially invited him without any hope of getting anything. And they both were happy. As soon as he gave eight, now that lalchi thing started. Now there's a problem here. Now there's a problem. Right? So, فَقَالَ صَاحِبُ الْخَمْسَ لِي خَمْسَ The one who had five loaves of bread. He said, listen, we had five, you had three, we had eight. He gave eight dirhams. Just makes basic sense here. I should be taking five dirhams and you take three. 
So he says, no, 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 no. We ate together. It's been a group together. It's a community thing. It's a together thing. He's given us four. You take four, I take four. There's no way you're getting five and I'm getting three. Back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> they go to Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu listens to the person and he says, uh, listen, your brother's offered you three dirhams. He said, yes. He said, take it. He said, no, 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 no. I want fair, four and four. Ali radiallahu anhu. Now, now, the key word in this whole thing here is, and I hope I'm stimulating your brains here a little bit, that akalu al-arghifat al-thamaniya bisawiyya. They ate and consumed the eight loaves equally. That's the narration. Akalu, they ate al-arghifat, plural of raghif, arghifat al-thamaniya, eight loaves bisawiyya equally. Three of them consumed it equally. Sayyidina Ali said, you know what? Actually, now that you insist in, you need to be informed that you who want four, you actually deserve only one. Huh? <laughs> I went to solicitor, 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 money, ke money, what are you? Hey, but you go to karwa mange. You say, go to a much a TV chilo. Be you to get you say, go to a much a TV chilo. You only deserve one. He said, wow. Now look at the intelligence of Sayyidina Ali. He said, you people ate these eight loaves equally? He said, yes. Okay, so divide eight by three equally? It doesn't. Assume they cut it in halves. So it's 16. So divide it 16 by three equally? It's not going to happen. So let's assume each loaf was cut into... Th- th- read the narration. I'm not th- giving from my pocket here. Yeah. <laughs> Then each loaf was cut into three portions. So eight loaves times three is 24. So now 24 portions consumed by three people equally. Sahibuka, your companion, he had five loaves. So five times three is 15. Akala minha thamaniya. Out of that five, out of that 15, he ate eight parts. How much is left out of that? Seven. You had three loaves. Your three loaves times three is nine. Out of that nine, eight or you ate. One left here, seven left here. The man who gave the eight dirhams, he ate it. So give him his seven, take your one and tough luck. يَتَفَجَّرُ الْعِلْمُ مِنْ جَوَانِبِهِ وَتَنْتِقُ الْحِكْمَةُ مِنْ نَوَاحِ Look at greed. Sometimes you ask yourself, you fight, you argue, you go through so much. And in the end, what did you get out of it? What did it what, was it worth the dollar, the pound, the headache, the frustration, the anger? The, no, was it worth the negotiation? Not at all. Last point here. We're talking of taking motivation, reading the stories of the pious. Sayyidina Ali was a person. This is amazing. A person who was false in his argument. Regardless of how strong he was, he never had believed that his strength will win him his way to, to his verdict in the presence of Ali radiallahu anhu. His clout, his muscle, his know-how, his uh, you know, influence was never going to buy him his way. وَلَا يَيْأَسُ الضَّعِيفُ مِنْ عَدْلِهِ And a weak and a feeble person would never become despondent because you know what, I'm feeble, I'm weak, I'm docile, I'm passive, so my word, my statements will not be heard. وَإِنَّ كَثِيرًا مِنَ الْخُلَطَاءِ لَيَبْغِي بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ وَعَزَّنِي فِي الْخِطَابِ عَزَّنِي فِي الْخِطَابِ When the two litigants came to Dawood alayhi salam and they said, this is my partner. He has 99 ewe uh, and sheep and I have only one and he wants to take this one. And the thing is, عَزَّنِي فِي الْخِطَابِ إِمْنَ بُولْتَا آورَ مَنَ بُولْتَا نِي آورَ إِمْنَ بُولْتَا آورَ مَرْتِي بُولَا إِنِي تَكَ بُولْوَا نُو پَتِي بُولْوَي چَائِ بُولْوَي چَائِ Ni bole to ni wechai. Azzani fil khitab. 
He can talk. He's got the gift of the gab. He can dominate. He's got the art. He's got the skill. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu, the truth would always prevail. And I'll leave you with this incident and we conclude insha'Allah. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam enters into the town and the city and we know the incident and we've read it, etc. And two people are fighting. One is a Tibti and one is a Sibti. One is an Israelite, one is a Coptic. Hada min Shi'atihi wa hada min And uh, so the Sibti, the Israelite, calls on to Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam that please come and help. And Sayyidina Musa comes and listens to the process, etc. And then tries to give deliverance to the victim from the abuse of the dictator and the one who had uh, unleashed the assault. But inadvertently, when he tries to give him a gentle blow, it proves to be fatal. It proves to be fatal and it flaws him. Right? فَوَكَزَهُ مُوسَى فَقَضَى عَلَيْهِ And it flaws him. And the Quran speaks about it. Immediately he turns to Allah. هَذَا مِنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّهُ عَدُوٌ مُضِلٌ مُبِينٌ Oh my Lord, forgive me. Oh my Lord, forgive me. I did not intend to do this here. And... Uh, I tried to discipline him because of the abuse, etc. قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي ظَلَمْتُ نَفْسِي فَاغْفِرْ لِي Listen to the reflection what I was pointing on, justice in, in, in every regard. The next day when Sayyidina Musa a.s. comes out and he's walking in, in the place there, that person with whom he was fighting, he passed away. But the person who Musa a.s. defended, يَتْوَ بَاتْوَ كُوِي بِجَاتِ بَجَلُوا He's, he's busy arguing with someone else. So Musa alayhi salam said, إِنَّكَ لَغَوِيٌّ مُبِينٌ إِنَّكَ And Alama Abu al-Hasan Ali Nadwi in Qasr's third part says, إِنَّكَ وَقِحٌ تُو بِشَرَمٌ I mean, you're shameless. It's like yesterday you were fighting, and now again you're in a fight. Hakim al-Umma makes his tidlal from this year. فِيهِ أَنَّ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ the Anbiya, and of course, especially Musa alayhi salatu was salam, لا يوجد فيه عصبية قومية بل فيه العدل الكامل He is not there to just defend his own people. This man was from his tribe. Yesterday he was a victim. Musa alayhi salam defended him. Day two, Musa felt the need that the very family member who he defended needs to be reproached and admonished and chastised because looks like he's got a quarreling nature. So his family ties and sharing the same tribe or culture didn't stop him. He addressed it head on. Can we say that to people of our own tribe, clan, family, whatever it is? No. But it's up. So anyway, my message is we need to take inspiration from the pious. That's what will motivate us. Huh? That is what will inspire us. Naam khud ke dam se kamana parta hai. Naam khud ke dam se kamana parta hai. Badnami log aapko kama kar dete hai. Naam khud ke dam se kamana parta hai. Badnami log aapko kama kar dete hai. وہ ہی مردہ نہیں ہے جس میں ساس نہیں وہ بھی ایک مردہ ہے جس میں انسانیت نہیں ملک کچھ اس طرح سے بدلنے لگا ملک کچھ اس طرح سے بدلنے لگا کہ لوگ گائی بیس کو چرانے میں آر محسوس کرتے ہیں اور کتے کو گمانے میں فخر محسوس کرتے ہیں ملک کچھ اس طرح سے بدلنے لگا کہ گائی بیس کو چرانے میں آر محسوس کرتے ہیں جو انبیاء کی سنت چلی آ رہی ہے اور کتے کو گمانے میں فخر محسوس کرتے ہیں جسم میں جسم میں شگر بڑھتی جا رہی ہے اور زبان میں مٹاس کم ہوتی جا رہی ہے جسم میں شگر بڑھتی جا رہی ہے اور زبان میں مٹاس کم ہوتی جا رہی ہے وہ کیا کسی نے خوب کہا ہے جب سے کتابیں سرک کے کنارے پہ بکنے لگے اور جھوٹے کانچ کے شوروم میں تو سمجھ لینا لوگوں کو علم شعور کی ضرورت نہیں ہے جھوٹوں کی ضرورت ہے